All right, guys, it's Stephen here, back with another video, and this time we're talking about the man on everyone's lips, Gabriel Jesus. The Brazilian wonder kid has finally arrived in Manchester, looking absolutely freezing. If he's on Instagram, he's anything to go by. We've seen him dancing around with buskers in the street, but hopefully we'll see him dancing past defenders pretty soon. Terrible link, but anyway, yeah, he is finally here. A lot of people have been saying, where is he going to play? What position will he slot into? What are his weaknesses? What are his strengths? And should we be excited or cautious? So basically, today, I'm going to run through a few things about his style, about what he can bring to Manchester City and whether he should be excited or not. So I'm going to fire right through several points for you. Firstly, he is only very young, still still just a baby in footballing terms. 19 years old, he's been carrying a whole weight of expectation on his shoulders now for a few months, if not a season or two for Palmeiras, as he's basically shot to fame very quickly as Brazil's new number nine. He scored four goals in six games, and basically for Palmeiras, he was a star player in the Brazilian league this year. He won the player of the, uh, player of the season, and obviously guided them to their first title in 22 years. He's still very young, but he's already achieved so much so quickly that this this move has not come as a surprise to many people. He's obviously moved from a league where it's physical, it's aggressive, but there's also technical ability there. But then he's come to arguably the most competitive league in the world. It is going to be an absolutely huge ask for him to adapt to the English league, to the intensity, to the increased technique, and in general the pressure that media is going to put him. Stylistically, he's an all-round forward. He generally has everything to his game, potentially. He has an explosive turn of pace. He's very quick off the mark. Technically, well, he's Brazilian. He was a street footballer before and he has that impotence, that magic, that ability to just dash past the player, to go one way, to sidestep a keeper several times and put it in the bottom corner or finish with a chip from 20 yards and basically do everything you'd associate with a flamboyant Brazilian wonder kid, a real actual number nine Brazilian wonder kid. That is exciting. This isn't Joe. This is a proper top of the market, high range Brazilian wonder kid and it's great to see him. He's also got uh, great feet, very skillful player. He also, interestingly, he has a very hard working attitude and this is the reason why City and particularly Guardiola have courted him for so long. He isn't just your typical Brazilian flair player. He doesn't just have uh, goals and great feet and great ability to dance past players. He works incredibly diligently off the ball too. He will track back, he will follow his man, he will get stuck in and he's not adverse to a scrap. He's obviously a very instinctive finisher as well. You can see some of the clips of some of his goals on screen now. He has a very uh, diverse way of finishing. A bit of an Aguero-esque kind of finish here, if I'm being totally honest. And that, that'll obviously bode him very well. He looks like more of a natural forward now than he used to be. He used to be more based that wide. The most encouraging for me is his intelligence, his game intelligence. He seems to have ability to understand where he should be at any point. He seems to be able to drop into space, be it out on the channels or pockets of space between the midfield and the forward line, and giving and going and passing around with the likes of Neymar players, obviously, who've done it all at the highest level in, uh, in the professional game. He doesn't seem to fear uh, his responsibility. He doesn't seem to mind it. He seems to take it on his shoulders. You can tell by his emotional reaction when Palmeiras won the title. He cared for that team. He cared for it. The fans cared for him. That's why he's become something of a cult hero over there to the Palmeiras fans already. And it's that maturity beyond his years that's really made him stand out as a player that can potentially actually adapt to this league and not struggle. It's going to be a massive ask for him, but he does seem to have all the attributes on paper, at least, to do a better fist of it than the likes of Rabinho, who always had issues, I guess, with his maturity, his application, and his general suitability to a cold, wet, windy away day in Stoke. There are obviously some concerns as well, and it'd be unfair not to mention them. He is still only incredibly young. 19 years old is uh, hard for any player to break into the Premiership. Never mind one who's come from a league uh, over in Brazil, which is vastly different uh, culturally, uh, technically, stylistically than the English league. And it's going to be a big ask for him to basically adapt to this league straight away. I don't expect him to, and I think that's totally fair enough. Obviously, the pace will be different over here. The physicality, there's no signs that he's actually going to struggle with a more physical game, but he might find it a little bit overwhelming initially, at least. It'll take him some time to adapt to that, as the way it would take any young lad uh, time to adapt to the increased technical ability and the physicality in the Premier League. It isn't just the pace that's going to go up, it's the overall quality of the players around him. There's also some questions about him emotionally. He's apparently quite... Uh, where's his heart on his sleeve, put it that way? He gives away a lot of fouls, gets a lot of yellow cards, but that usually comes from the right place. A willingness to kind of do the job, to track his man, to get stuck in, which is obviously a very admirable trait, but he probably needs to learn when to get stuck in and when not to. In in general, though, it's, it's a trait that can be honed in the right direction. I would rather a player who gets stuck in, gives away fouls, than one who doesn't, stands there with his hands on his hips and does nothing. That doesn't seem to be a problem for him at all. I guess the expectation could be a little bit more for him to handle initially. He's obviously come here with immense amounts of hype, and it's probably 
kind of his own fault, I guess. Be that good, be that Brazilian, and people are going to expect a lot from you. But we really should remember that he is still just a kid. It's easy to get carried away with a playlist, and I probably got a bit carried away myself, but he is just a kid. It's understandable if you take six, seven, even a year, uh, six, seven months, even a year to get up to pace in this league. That is totally natural. He's also come mid-season when the league is at its... Well, everyone's basically at their sharpest at the moment. He's had about a three, four-week break after playing a very intense season over in Brazil. I think he's going to be tired potentially a little bit as well. He has to adapt to the country, the weather, the food, his players. He doesn't speak any English. It's going to be very hard for him to settle over here. He still only has developing technique as well. He's very good on the ball. But, you know, he's still prone to overthinking it, maybe taking a slight heavy touch. And he obviously isn't the strongest in the air as well. But it's not for a lack of trying. He's scored some headed goals, but maybe he lacks the, the neck strength to be totally lethal in the air. But that can come with age. It can come with experience. It can come with, in general, growing to his skin. He's not the tallest, but he isn't tiny either. He's about five foot ten, genuinely a decent sized lad. Probably won't have the same physical problems as someone like Rubinho had, but he won't have it easy initially, at least. Now, this is the question that most people have been asking: Where is he going to play for Manchester City? I found it interesting uh, after analysing the West Ham game, like we all did, that we played a diamond where we played two up front. That was the first time I basically seen us play two up front this season. Sterling was very close to a ground throughout that game, and it was excellent. It was different. It works. To me, that's the kind of ideal role Gabriel Jesus probably wants at Manchester City. He's a very clever player. He's very diverse. He can adapt to different roles. But that's probably where he needs to be, up top, through the middle. That's where he's developed. Guardiola has also said that he plans to use him there as a striker because that's what he's become. And he's there to ease the burden on Aguero. He's there to provide an alternative to Iheanacho. He can also, obviously, play out wide. As when we're playing uh, with more traditional wingers with the likes of Sterling, maybe out on the right, or Nolito, or someone like that. Someone like Sarni on the right, maybe. Gabriel Jesus can play on the left, and he can play on the right. He is more of a traditional number nine these days, but he has the intelligence and the, the at least the diligence at least to track back in a number of various roles. He's not going to be stood there on the halfway line with his hands on his hips. He will be tracking back. He'll be following his man and he'll be working hard. He has the intelligence and the overall desire to get involved in several different positions on the pitch. Though I suspect we will see him mainly as a striker. Mainly initially coming on as a kind of late replacement for Aguero. I do suspect we'll see him on the bench every now and then. That's fine. That's totally normal. We have to be patient in saying that we've been way where we've been patient with Sane and he's finally starting to find his feet over here it'll be very similar for Gabriel Jesus in my opinion but yes I do expect him to see either initially as a left winger or actually used alongside Aguero potentially as a replacement when Aguero needs a bit of a rest Finally, the question most of you have been asking, when are we going to see our new Brazilian wonder kid? It looks like it could be against Everton. After some problems with his registration, which came from just a slight document error, apparently, between City and Palmeiras, uh, his registration should be completed this week and City should be able to officially announce him. And hopefully, he should be involved against Everton. He's already joined the training, apparently. Apparently, he was involved last week. Um, Gaio Clichy said he's already there as well. So... Hopefully we'll see him very, very soon. I suspect we'll probably see Manissi start on the bench. That makes sense. But yeah, we should have our hands on our lovely, shiny new toy. And I think we should be excited. I think it's not every day you get to sign a player that brings that much glamour, that much excitement. I'm not expecting the world from him. But I do find a, a very nice romantic air to this transfer in general. A Brazilian wonder kid isn't something that we've generally been involved in in the past. This is a high-end wonder kid as well. The kind of player that in the past probably would have snubbed Manchester City for someone like Barcelona, Real Madrid or someone like that. But now they're coming to us... And that says it all about the stature as our club at the moment, where we are, Pep Guardiola's influence and what we could see in the future. It's going to be a very interesting ride to see how this lad adapts to the Premiership and I can't wait personally. Anyway guys, let me know if you like this video, get in the comments, what do you think about Gabriel Jesus and in general, have a good evening, see you later.